What's an emasculated male? Hmm, I just Googled it. Let me tell you what it says here. It says to make a man feel less masculine, to deprive a man of his male strength or role, and to make a man feel weaker or less effective. Hmm, a lot to talk about here on today's video. Stay tuned. So I'm Brad Shore, I'm a licensed therapist. Welcome to Ask a Shrink. Today I wanna to talk about emasculated men. Why they're emasculated, how that happens, how they feel about themselves. Let's just talk about what it means to be emasculated. It's a term you don't often hear. It's not, it's not used a lot because I think it's shameful for men probably to hear it. And it's shameful for women to use it and hear it maybe as well because usually the dynamics are such that the reason men are emasculated is because of the kind of mother they have. So you have this male, female, yin and yang going on here. So it's not talked about a lot, but I wanna talk about it today because it's more prevalent than people realize. When a baby is born and it's a male child, they're basically neutral. What I mean is they're not conditioned at this point. They're a male child and they are growing up as a male. What causes them to be emasculated is usually the kind of parenting that's going on in the home. Normally you have a strong smothering type of mother who is wearing the pants in the family and a more absent distant father, emotionally withdrawn perhaps, that is not stepping up to the plate. So a son born into these dynamics, hmm, guess what? On some level they're kind of screwed from the get-go because they would have to overcome these dynamics in order to shine and rise to their full potential. That can be difficult without some help or support in life because if all you know is the way you're being raised for all those formative years and you have a mother this big who's basically in the control seat of the family and a father who symbolically is kind of this big and not in the control seat of the family, then the son is being role modeled what it means to be emasculated. So they see a weak distant father, well that must be what men are. Men simply stand back and take being controlled by women. And women seem to run the show because that's what the boy is seeing growing up. So what they know is nothing different than that as they themselves get older and go out into the world and start dating and have to find their career path and what it means to be them, what it means to have an identity and be a man in the world. If you saw a weak distant father who couldn't stand up to his wife, then you probably have been conditioned in this way to think that that's my role in the world. I can't really do much because never really saw it doesn't seem to be allowed. It seems to be what the norm is. So I'm going to go along with that. That causes a boy to be a man who's emasculated. Now this can create so many problems for this now young man in his life as he's growing up because a bunch of things. One, you may not know how to voice your opinion and stand up for yourself because after all, that's not what men do. Two, you may not be sure about your career path because Mm, men seem to be just kind of the go with the flow kind of guys, whereas women seem to be more strong and powerful and in positions of authority, at least in the kid's mind. We have to remember we're viewing this from how the kid is viewing the world, the young boy. And if you happen to grow up to be a straight male, then your role is going to be one who, mm, kind of submissive. You're probably going to be attracted to it without perhaps even knowing it, a strong, more authoritarian kind of woman because that's what was role modeled for you. So you're going to be seen as a more meeker character in the relationship. And guess what? Women who want to be in charge are going to zoom in on men like you because they're looking to control somebody in a marriage or relationship because that's what they want. That's a whole nother video that I'll do about women who approach life in that way because there's reasons and they're being conditioned for that as well. But today we just wanna stay with what it's like for the man. If you do get married and have children, what kind of father are you gonna be? Well, we know it was role modeled for you not to have a very strong interactive part of the children's life, right? Because your dad didn't have that with you. So now maybe you become a more distant, emotionally uninvolved father because you don't really know any better. So this is what it means to be emasculated. And the way to overcome it is to look at it in just the way I'm presenting it. We need to talk about this issue more because it's more prevalent than people realize. 
So A is awareness, realizing that this is how I've been conditioned, this is how I was raised. I come from a very dysfunctional family, but I don't want to be that kind of father. I want to be a father who's very involved and on an equal playing field with my wife. I choose and want to be a man who is very involved in sharing his feelings, having a point of view, voicing his opinion, and reaching shared negotiation levels with my wife. This is equality. This needs to be looked at as an equal playing field, but men who are emasculated have a difficult time with this. You need to catch yourself if you're attracted to or dating women who are more authoritative and viewed as stronger than you in your mind, that you feel more meek and weak. If that is what you're finding attractive, if that is turning you on, run for the hills because it's going to be, in the long run, a very destructive, probably sad relationship because the inequality like that never lasts long in a healthy marriage. What generally happens is the man at some point as years and decades go on realizes like, why am I having no voice here? Why am I being taken advantage of in this family? Why is my wife not really listening to me? And why are the kids sort of being taken over by her and gravitating towards her? And where am I in all this? At some point, the man as he ages and matures, hopefully will realize this sucks. I didn't want to sign up for this, but you didn't know you were signing up for that because you were conditioned this way at an early age. So hence, that's why I'm doing this video. You have to draw awareness to it. Practice and feel and see what it's like to have more of a voice, to feel more on an equal playing field with a woman. And if you don't, you will pay a price for it in your life. Again, I saw it in my own family with a dad who did not stand up to my mother and he paid a price in terms of all the buried unhappy emotions that were shoved away in him because there was no place that was safe for him to explore it and talk this through. So what he did was simply bury feelings away and occasionally things would pop up in volcanic rageful explosions because kids who are growing up like this don't understand that there is a middle ground. They see things as either black or white. You either keep everything in and you deal with it or if you stand up to somebody, it's probably going to be when you're in a fit of rage because you don't know any difference, just like my father, and then you blow up and then that's not productive either. You have to remember, people are drawn in marriages to do their dance together. So it's not only the male, but it's also the female who is drawn to men like this. I want to make that point as well. And again, a video will be done about this topic. But I will say to give you a teaser for the video that's going to be coming up about this, the woman can say, I didn't do anything wrong. I just married him and, and this is who I am. Well, yes, but you chose a man that on some level you knew you could control because you wanted to be in the position of power in your family. So you have to ask yourself, for you women out there like this, what would it be like to be with a stronger, more dominant male? Hmm? Would you be attracted to that? Would you really want to be married to a man like that? You'd have to meet them halfway with everything. You'd have to negotiate. You'd have to compromise. Hmm. So for kids who are watching this, pay attention. If you're still growing up at home and you're noticing any of these red flags that I'm mentioning, please be sure to watch one of my videos on emotional incest, where I further explore some of these dynamics and notice what is happening in your family as you're growing up. And maybe you can shed some light on this or try to go to a therapist yourself or get your family in family counseling, but don't just sit back and let it happen without a fight. And if this is a male and you're older now, and maybe you're out in the world, either starting your life or already establishing your life, you may have to grow a pair, right? Mm -hmm. No other way to say it. And start dealing with life in a way that you're not used to. And that may mean sometimes voicing your opinion in ways that are gonna piss people off, or setting your boundaries in ways that people aren't going to like. And by the way, those are healthy boundaries where you get to exist. You're not so much at the bottom of the totem pole anymore, but you're moving up the totem pole into a place of equality with everybody in your life, especially your significant other or your mate. So I think this is a slightly controversial topic because you don't hear many people talking about it, at least I don't think so. And I think it happens more often than not. I know it happened in my family and I know with some of my clients as they come in for couples counseling, I can see it unfolding in front of me and that's why I wanted to do this video. Please leave me some comments below. I'd love to hear from you. Any questions about this, please leave them in the comment section. Please subscribe to this YouTube channel if you like these kind of mental health videos. And until next week, I'm Brad Shore signing off from Ask a Shrink.